I'm Jason Fox. I work at the Dana Geological Survey, and I'm studying both Greenland and Pole Arctic physical climate from observations. Starting in the 1980s, the Arctic punched out of the, the noise, as it were, and, and so the Arctic climate warming becomes non-subtle starting after the 1980s, and that's intensifying now. Uh, we see it across many independent lines of measurements. So there's a more humid atmosphere. There's more rain instead of snow because the atmosphere is warmer. The thinner sea ice is releasing more heat into the atmosphere. And the vegetation on the ground is, is getting more dense at the same time as there is increasing wildfire. Uh, one trigger mechanism is a more convective precipitation, so uh, clouds that can produce lightning. So there's actually warming-driven lightning ignition of wildfires uh, across the Arctic, uh, you know, huge areas where there's no capacity to control those fires. Um, we see uh, permafrost degradation. Um, that's due in part to warming of the surface, but also because of logging. Uh, when you remove trees, it, it actually allows the surface to um, heat up because the, the, the tree canopy can um, insulate the, the permafrost. And so some of the largest uh, erupting, um, eroding surfaces uh, on the tundra are actually the result of deforestation in places like uh, Siberia. So there's there are lots of independent uh, signals which all show that the Arctic climate is transforming rapidly. Since the beginning of climate modeling, uh, intensified warming in the Arctic has been expected. And so, so that's been since the late 1960s. And, and now we see this, uh, it's not surprising because uh, the Arctic is, uh, normally has a reflective snow cover uh, that's over more of the year. So with the snow co cover area declining, the snow cover duration declining, so then you have a darker surface that, that uh, heats up the atmosphere and actually amplifies the initial uh, warming. Um, and that's why uh, we talk about uh, Arctic amplification of warming. Uh, there's other contributors to that. Uh, more heat is uh, transported into the Arctic atmosphere just by, by storm systems. This has been an long anticipated, and now we see a very non-subtle um, manifestation of, of Arctic uh, climate heating. Greenland and any uh, land ice mass is a threshold system, so it's either gaining or losing mass. And so the Greenland ice sheet has become the largest a single source of sea level rise because it is beyond its threshold. And given the likely future climate scenarios, uh, there's no plausible future scenario uh, where Greenland starts to re regrow. Uh, so technically, Greenland is lost. However, it's a question of the rate that it's being lost is the more the climate system heats up, the faster it goes. So if global society got its act together and, and started reining in emissions and drawing down carbon, then we're effectively putting the brakes on what's becoming an, a runaway uh, loss. Uh, but we're in the early stages, so uh, it's not it gonna be uh, as uh, you know, a calamity of sea level rise for for some time. Uh, there's a few places in the world where sea level rise is beginning to become uh, an expensive nuisance, uh, not just in Florida, but places like Jakarta, uh, where you have you know tens of millions of people 
living very close to sea level. So they've already started to move Jakarta. And it's the poor people in Jakarta who will be last to move. It's the poor there who are already most susceptible to the sea rise there. And, and so that's a reminder about how uh, climate change will disproportionately impact poor people who don't have the resilience, the capacity to, to move, to, to invest in extensive uh, coastal engineering projects. Um, but, you know, sea level is a big problem really on the horizon, but more immediately is, is the impacts that we're seeing now that, that are already threatening uh, food and water security. And so I'm, I'm a lot more concerned about um, the loss of food and water security because it's more immediate than uh, the melting of, of land ice, which uh, will increasingly uh, force its way onto the agenda. Something new is how the thinning of Arctic Ocean sea ice is letting more heat into the atmosphere. And, and as a result, uh, the temperature trend over the North Pole, the Arctic Ocean, is like non-linear. It's, it's not just warming, it's like the warming is accelerating because of multiple processes that are, you know, not just delivering heat, but, but there's more heat than emerging out of the sea surface. That's, that's something new uh, that, that as the years add up, uh, we, we see like 2020, uh, very uh, high temperature anomalies, you know, that they're setting new records and then you plot those data out and you see that, well, it's not actually even a linear pattern anymore. It's got a, a, a steeper rise in, in recent years. I think the other new thing, uh, and, and in hindsight, it's not surprising, but it's how there's more rainfall. Uh, the North Atlantic especially, um, less snow, more rain, simply because the, the atmosphere is warmer. There's that threshold system of, of the, the freezing point. And, and so there's more time above the freezing point. So more rain uh, in, a, in a more humid climate, it's uh, dumping more fresh water onto the surface of the North Atlantic, like a lot more. And, and um, you know, so I, the, the, the modeling is only as good as it is in, to envision different processes. And so modelers keep adding more details to the models, but there, there's always this infidelity in, in the models uh, because of insufficient grid resolution, insufficient uh, detail of, of the processes. So uh, that's why the story is one of surprise in one of a faster than forecast kind of uh, warming and melting. That also shouldn't be surprising uh, because uh, the, the, the limited fidelity of, of models as compared to the infinite fidelity of, the, of nature. It's uh, very deeply frustrating uh, after the scientific community is, is kind of working in earnest uh, in good faith to try to deliver the, the best information about what's happening with climate. Uh, that information is um, up against a, a, a non-truthful, disingenuous uh, obfuscation uh, from, from corporations uh, which behave uh, not like um, humans, but by they behave like some um, voracious, uh, uh, rapacious uh, entity. And I think that's the problem that we have with uh, corporatism is, is the, the corporate organisms are uh, hostile to um, life as we know it. I, I think anyone can imagine why that is. Um, the, there's something about the emergence of, of, a, of a corporate organism uh, shedding any, any um, sense of, of uh, humanity or, uh, or caring. Uh, uh, so that, that's uh, deeply troubling. 
it's impossible to ignore even in Denmark where you have a system of governance that isn't tainted by uh, by a profit motive. Why is because the largest corporations in Denmark uh, have a board, uh, an independent foundation that that manages the um, the decisions, the big decisions that the large corporations make. So there is a kind of regulated capitalism in Denmark. Not, nevertheless, uh, in, all the Danish population who are are, are well educated on global issues, they they're you know, observing uh, what's happening in the U.S. and Brazil and China and all these big players um, trying to influence uh, these large economies uh, by offering in increasingly cleaner technologies um, to, to just try to equip the world with a more sustainable uh, kind of energy system in, in particular. You know, we're watching U.S. Um, Kind of political meltdown uh, with with great interest, uh, of course, um, because it, it it affects everyone on the world. I, I'm a strong advocate of drawdown, bringing up technologies to uh, take carbon out of the atmosphere. Um, of course, that has to happen in earnest now, uh, and I've called it the the big project of this century that goes alongside, of course, uh, reducing carbon emissions at the source. So that really treating the source of the problem is where we should put a lot of energy. Uh, and then, of course, efficiency. There's so much waste in, in our systems. And there's a lot of prosperity that can come from that, that transition, um, taking cues from nature, the, the technologies that nature's already developed for free. Uh, there's a lot of that out there. Uh, of course, uh, so uh, as a species, we need to uh, kind of open our perspective and 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 learn from nature the the solutions nature has devised, uh, put those in into practice. Um, so all of that said, uh, the scale of the drawdown problem is so enormous um, that I I'm not optimistic about uh, society, global society's capacity to uh, set that kind of machine, or it's many different uh, technologies, of course, to, to set that into motion is gonna take massive investments. Uh, it, as that happens, of course, there, there is prosperity that, should, that will come from that. So that's a, that's a, a, a silver lining on a dark cloud. Um, but the 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 continued uh, re resistance from uh, Russia, from from the the Trump administration, there are those are good examples of of, of regimes that uh, are short circuiting our uh, capacity to to win this uh, existential fight. <laughs> yeah, this this topic it's you know it's finally starting to really get to me and I so now I'm losing a lot of sleep over this I and there's not a night that goes by that I'm not um, you know just kind of staring into the darkness and thinking about uh, the especially Trump and how psychopathic that individual is and and, uh, and you know and how the regimes are supporting that out of uh, some kind of uh, um, deeply cynical self-preservation. Uh, so the, the the politics really get to me. The and then there's the wildfires uh, that are just off the charts in California. And now in Colorado, my home state has its largest recorded uh, wildfire. Uh, that's what really got me. That really affected me back in 2012 when the U.S. had its record warm summer. Uh, Colorado was was had record fires and Greenland had record melt. It, that um, that that really got me going. It was uh, very inspiring. But I, I I don't think that that we well we've made a lot of scientific progress. But but I, I don't think as as a as a species we've made the right kind of progress uh, to uh, recognizing our, our place in a in a globally interconnected system. Thank <music> you.